I love the smell of fresh coffee in the morning. Smells like victory. I'm not gonna show what's in the box. You will have seen them all when you watch the whole video anyway. So let's start with the cockpit. The cockpit is more detailed than I expected, but for someone else these details may not be satisfactory. However, no matter how much detail you add to such a visible cockpit, something will always be missing. Anyway, I will add some details from scratch. But first, I have to glue the main components of the cockpit in place. The cockpit is ready to detail. This is an old headphone cable. I am going to use this to create that mess of wires of the Bronco cockpit. To get some plastic pipes, I use stretched cotton bud as usual. First, I glue a piece of plastic pipe to tip of the wire and then I am fixing it to pre-drilled boxes. After fixing all the cables in their places, I organize them and stick them in place. This cable mess still seems not enough, needs some more. I am gonna use fishing line for that. Let's add the cable clamps. Some control sticks are not detailed enough. I need to make this from scratch. The ejection seats are molded in multiple parts and need some extra details too. I made this detail with a piece of plastic and lead wire simply. I'm adding more surface details with cling film as usual. and the seat belts.
If you are looking for more detailed information about the use of these materials, check my FOB Phantom cockpit build video. The link is on the sidebar. Let's add the belt buckles. I added the cable and oxygen hose detail using with brass and lead wire simply. Now I can start to paint. Primer first. And the main color. I'm painting the remaining details with a brush. And finally, I apply gloss varnish to protect all painted surfaces. The decals of the kit look good, so let's add. And weathering wash. Now I can apply the flat coat. Now I'm painting and highlighting the details with pencils. X22 for glass effect. And the cockpit is completed. Here is the result. The kit comes with a closed canopy option only. I will build the canopy in the open position, so I need to cut some of them. But first I need to scrape those handle details. Now I can start the cutting process. I am scraping it with a pointed sewing needle to cut the piece without breaking. After the cutting line is thin enough, I cut the two pieces apart with a nylon thread. Ok, let's build the main fuselage.
ICM has taken an interesting approach in this section. And this is the surprise. I think this piece should have been designed as a multiple piece and to form the panel lines. With its monolithic form, it has the potential to cause problems at many points, not to mention the seam lines you need to send form just below the panel lines. That's why you need to carefully glue the fuselage halves, otherwise you will be in trouble with this. No matter how careful you are, sanding and redetailing processes are inevitable in this area. Ok, let's get together the wing parts. The wings are molded in one piece and this is how it's combined with the fuselage. I liked it. I've measured a few times to avoid alignment issues and now I'm fixing the wings in place. And here we come to the tricky part, the assembly of large canopy parts, which is more difficult since I cut the right part of the canopy. First I polish the pieces and make sure all surfaces are clean. I'm starting with the left piece, the windshield, and the upper part. I use a thinner brush to avoid smearing the glue around. And finally, this is the remaining part of the right side. The landing gears. The second thing I don't like about this kit. You are unlikely to have any problems with a very good planning and assembly. However, the assembly states and points have a very high potential to cause problems. Very interesting and different assembly approach from ICM. Anyway, I'm going to add some details from scratch. Be careful here. Whether your model is tilted or not is about what you will do at this stage. Let's build the wheel wells. The same approach here again with the lower surface of the fuselage. So the seam lines you need to send is forming just below the panel lines. A long and careful sanding job awaits me. Ok, let's continue with the gun pods.
In the areas where we have completed the assembly so far, some minor putty and sanding jobs are required. This model is a tail sitter. Be sure to add weight to any spaces you found in front of the rear landing gear struts. I apply liquid putty to areas that are difficult to sand, and after it has dried, I wipe it with alcohol. To see the result, I am painting the canopy frames and sanded areas with black paint, which is also the canopy interior color. Ok, let's complete the assembly. These rivet details look like a bit overscaled to me, required sand down a little bit. I lost some of those rivets while sanding the seam lines. I will use this to add the new rivet details. This is simply a brass pipe, a 0.5mm. I just sharpened its edges with sanding paper. Although it doesn't look like it, the front landing gear is pretty solid. You just need to complete the assembly correctly. Finally, I can start to paint. The primer first, as usual. After applying the main color, now I am applying the gloss layer. The decals of the kit are quite thin, you don't have much time for alignment. It will be good to fix it in the right place in a few moves. After applying a gloss varnish layer on the decals, now I'm applying the weathering wash. After the weathering wash has dried, I'm wiping it with turpentine. And my favorite part, post shade weathering. I apply this weathering in two stages, light tones first, then dark tones. And finally the matte varnish. Let's remove the masks.
as I mentioned before, this is the only major problem of the kit. Of course, you can solve this situation in different ways. I choose this way. After drying overnight, it will be solid as a stone. I'm painting and adding the navigation lights. White glue is my favorite to fixing these type parts, because it's flexible. I added a copper wire to the frame for better adhesion. Let's glue it in place. Keep your fingers crossed. A few small details are still missing, the hydraulic arms. Let's build from scratch. Thanks to ICM for this beautiful kit. I had so much fun building it. Well, thanks for watching this episode. If you liked the video, please like and share. Subscribe my channel if you haven't yet. Also, you can support my channel if you can see the join button below or on Patreon. The links are in the information section below. See you soon on the next episode. Until then, take care yourself and keep modeling. Bye.